All right, everybody, welcome back to Dream Daddy. That's right, we're just starting again. Once again, I made a new dad, still named Kennedy, new Kennedy for a new man. So let's go ahead and uh, go. I mean, we've already read Dad Manda's thing before. It's really, really cute, but I'll just leave it up for a few, couple seconds so you can read the messages if you haven't watched the other videos and you would like to see it. Uh, so this time, we're going to be romancing Damien because that is who won in the uh, poll. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I've already romanced Craig and Robert who were both fantastic um, you know, storylines. Robert's was actually really, really um, kind of sad, but like you learn that he's not quite the person that he makes himself out to be. He kind of like projects this air of like assholery, but he's actually not a bad guy. He just is very distant and stuff, you know. And of course Craig, the overworked dad, who I was like, dude, you have to take a break or you're going to explode and then I'll have to clean up the mess. So, yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and message Damien. Oh, look, look how formal he is. How do you how do you do? What's going on? Yeah. I finally decided to join this information superhighway. He's like me. He's like, I don't know about all this social media. It's hard to understand. I'm old. Actually, I think Robert is the oldest dad, I think. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards, sweet, and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest in Victorian fashion, the inevitability of our own demise, or black cats, please send me a letter. Well, I'm going to send you a message, uh, because I don't want to write a letter, so here we go. Messaging Damien. He's the, like, overly dramatic goth dad. Um... Yeah, I mean, you, you saw him, if you've watched the first, my first playthrough of this where I was romancing Craig, we see him in, like, a Hot Topic type store, and he's just, like, having a fucking meltdown over some type of wrongly named whatever. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. I agree. He's a pretty neat looking dude. Super eccentric, but still nice. I like weird people, though. Everybody knows that. I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see that Damien's typing. But then he keeps typing. And typing... Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee and the computer finally dings. Kennedy. <laughs> Stop. I must confess my excitement to receiving your kind letter, for as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in a gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Oh, whoa, there's more. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden. Should it please you. Till then, adieu. Yours humbled, D. Blood March. Dude, he's got the most epic last name, too. So, I mean, he's pretty much a veritable badass at this point. Just one second, guys. <laughs> I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. So yeah, he's like kind of like one of those guys that he likes writing letters, so he writes like an entire fucking book just to tell you how happy he is to hang out with you. <laughs> it's like, I get it. You're great. Just... Stop. <laughs> hey, Amanda. Ah. Oh, there's my new Kennedy. Amanda pops out of her room. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she'd been crying. Hey, are you alright? Oh, yeah, totally. I'm cool. Yeah. I just found out that the succulent I've been watering and singing to for the last three months was actually made out of plastic. Oh, so she has, like, different, like, things she says, I think, depending on who you romance. That's cool. Even the dirt was fake. Oh, honey. Oh. If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you. And I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to kick someone's butt, I'm only a phone call away. Mm. 
Thanks, Dad. I appreciate that. But I'm fine. Really. I'm unconvinced, but I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. Can you help me with something? Ugh. Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. <laughs> so freaking funny. That's such a... You understand, guys. <laughs> no, no. Can you interpret this for me? Eh? I turn the computer to Amanda, and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand NetSpeak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad? Kids got over saying LOL and LMAO or whatever, and decided that what they needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Huh? Where's your pen and quill? <laughs> what? Yeah. Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, how will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutante ball? <laughs> Okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Ah. <laughs> or our dowry. Or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time, and now you're reciting things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Hmm. Like, the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie. Still gotta be, though. Great. So what do I say to Damien? <laughs> I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. What would I do without Amanda? <laughs> sure thing, dude. Regards. Kennedy. <laughs> Amanda hits send and smiles at me. Aww. Well, I suppose that's that. I love you, Amanda. Oh, she's the perfect daughter. Whoa. Oh, he's got the cool house on the block. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor? Estate? The gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker back, and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I wait- <clears throat> Sorry, my throat, like, dried up. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. So, if every now and then you hear me kind of like coughing or whatever or you know making like weird breathing sounds or something it's because I was making potato soup yesterday and I was trying to test it to make sure I had enough salt in it and I took a big old bite and that bite was extremely hot and I swallowed it instead of just like spitting it out into the sink or something or the garbage I have a garbage disposal so it's like whatever uh, I swallowed it so I burned the my throat and it sucks so yeah if if I make weird noises, that's why. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. Dude, I like your dog. As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. Hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Dude, I just got done playing Resident Evil 2. I did not come into this relationship to be fucking terrified and chased by potential zombies. Kennedy, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle- walking. <laughs> oh yeah, walking candle holder. I thought I said it wrong, but I said it right. Dude, bro, do you like my fucking shirt? What's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Ugh. Oh. Oh, sorry, there was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? Oh. I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? Hmm. I like oil paintings. Right. Hmm. Right. Hmm. <laughs> oh. I, I like your vest. Can I has? Please, let me show you around. Okay. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to die. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. Oh. This is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Hmm. Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past the door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. That would be Lucian's room. Did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenagers are. Onward, onward. There's more to see. A rebellious dude, he lives in friggin' 
he's living in the now. I'm not saying that you don't, you look good. I like your outfit, Dracula, but your son was born in a whole other time. Hmm. We reach a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. Ooh, flourishing. Huh. And this is the library. Oh, tale as old as time. We're getting married, Damien. Just to let you know. Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Are you wearing contacts? Like Dracula contacts? Terrifying. Uh. I walk to the window and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughters on his back. Nice. Damn. He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Damn. Ugh. <laughs> Did you know that Victorians spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of a full-length win- out of full-length windows? Wait, really? Oh. No, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. Ha! Huh. I walk up to the glass display of pin bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. Ugh. I pin them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger, and you should be. You almost cut your finger off carving with Robert. Good hmm. thing you had band-aids. Ah, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? Hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kennedy, in the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels would encourage use into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. Hmm. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound, <laughs> bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Oh my. Okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> Whoa, okay, wait. No, no, no. What weird fan fiction do you have? Did you print this out or did you write it? Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. That's a rare book for my private collection. <laughs> Please, will you join me for tea? D Damien. Damien, I have questions. I follow Damien to his setting room, where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Okay, you guys have to wait one second because I need to go heat up my coffee because I am thirsty. I gotta wait for it to warm up. But you know it's bad when you open your microwave to put your cup of tea or your cup of tea. God damn it, you guys. Freaking Damien, your cup of coffee in the microwave, and then you find your other cup of coffee in the microwave from yesterday. That's just me in a nutshell. <laughs> Damien smiles to himself. It's fixing a beep. So what? Oh. It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth of class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the later time of day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables of which they're served. By the way, 50 seconds in the microwave, perfect amount of time to heat your coffee. Oh. Hmm. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. Oh, here goes the microwave. One second, guys. coffee let's go we're having afternoon tea that's informative Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich thank you Damien so uh, not a lot of vampires around here it seems like you've really put a lot of work into this place huh. but thank you hmm. no one's ever complimented my home before Hell, I can barely get matching salt and pepper shakers in my place. And look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. Hmm. That's 
Very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? How delightful! Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? Hmm. Sorry? Ha! <laughs> Did you guys see a marching band? Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand. <sighs> You're serious? Uh. Of course. But it's, you know, the song... Amanda made me listen to it. Seriously? Uh -huh. I'd love to see a marching band. Hmm. Nevertheless, <laughs> I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? I like not dying when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. Oh. I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideas would be admittedly horrid. Oh. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it at the same time. Huh. Tell me, Kennedy, do you have any hobbies? Uh, yeah, napping. I'm really good at that. <laughs> oh man, I do. But I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Hmm. Well, I'd love to hear about your interest. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing, and quite honestly, rather attractive. Ooh. Mm. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. Uh, well, he does He does love word jumbles. In fact, he brought some one time for all the dads to do at the tea party, I think. The uh, written word fascinates me. We spend so much time using words, you know, and uh, I think people would appreciate them more if they had to unjumble them. Uh. It's poetic, really. Uh -huh. Oh, so you're a writer? In a sense. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Oh. Come, I have one more thing to show you. Ooh. I'm intrigued by his house. Oh my god. He's got a garden. Damien takes me around the back of his home, where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it, and butterflies flit lazily through the air. Hmm. My garden. It's beautiful. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangement very seriously. Oh. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Huh. Even more interesting is that one flower can mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Hmm. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off a vine. William Bulbiferum, the orange lily. What do you think it, this one means? <laughs> Thou art the tightest. Uh. Yes. Hmm. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Well, <laughs> and that's precisely why, why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? I you know. Oh, all of these are cool. Honeysuckle's delicious, sunflowers are pretty, and snapdragons, they like to eat things, I think. Is that what snapdragons do? No, they don't, but I'm gonna... Because they're cute, and you can do that thing where you squeeze them so it looks like they're talking. Yeah, they look like little dragon faces, like with a mouth, and you can be like, Rah! pretending to breathe fire with a flower. What a lovely choice. Thank you. I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. He... He would put together a bouquet for me? Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a phone rings. Huh. Oh, Kennedy, will you excuse me? I must take this. He pulls his cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. <laughs> Go for it. Uh. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into the garden Amanda and I tried to start at, start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Oh hey, a gargoyle! Oh no, I knocked over the gargoyle! Uh oh. Fix that guard. Oh. Nope. What is? How do I? Oh. Okay. This? Nope. Th 
this. Got it. Oh. I didn't break it. I didn't, I didn't, I just, um, I was just, you know, I was just leaning and it fell over. <laughs> Whew, that was a close one. Uh-oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Ugh! Kennedy, my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything all right? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything's perfectly fine, but I, uh... It's Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have... Well, his teacher needs me to come to the school, post-haste. Do you need help? Oh no, you don't have to... Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. You're... Right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go. I love how we talk like completely separate, like different from each other. It's so weird. Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. Eh. Hey Damien, you're here in record time. Hmm. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids Are In Trouble rodeo. Hmm. What is it this time? Oh. This, Damien, you have to see to believe. What did he do? Damien and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us to the busy quarters of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if a man is around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room, without a, with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. Stop with this stupid, creepy music. <laughs> At least I had enough sins to stay out of creepy basements. We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucian and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucian has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. Huh. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucian tried to kill me. What? <laughs> oh, come on, drama queen. I <laughs> doubt it. The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. Oh. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. He went on cask of Amontillado on him. <laughs> Stupid. Your dad reads it. Your name's Ernest Hemingway... whatever. Read a book. Huh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. Lucian, did you try to cask of Amontillado Ernest? I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turn to Damien and whisper to him. What's, uh... What's Cask of Amontillado? It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to his cellar with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, then buries him alive behind a brick wall. Ugh. It's a lovely story. Uh, I agree. It's a very good story, so if you haven't read it, go read it. So wait. Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad. Whoa! It took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Amontillado, and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse? Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. Sweet man, Chico. It's only five pages long and there is no movie. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. I don't know. Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I did. I don't see a problem here. Alright, I'm filing this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucian high, <laughs> high five. A teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son, ho son home. Mr. Bloodmarch, you too. Thank you for your mediation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school in tense silence. Oh, man. I mean, it's pretty funny, though. 
Lucian, Damon, and I all pile into my car and begin the drive home. Lucian immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. Oh, no. Hmm. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that, too. Huh. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. Ugh. I love you, son. Hmm. Lucian continues staring out the window. Love you, too. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. No. He should. That is fine. I mean, come on, Ernest. <laughs> 20 minutes? I didn't realize what he was doing for 20 minutes, and I was like, oh shit, he's walling me up in here. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucian hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's alright, and all things considered, Lucian's bricklaying was pretty good, so there's your silver lining. Hmm. There is that, yes. Uh, yeah. Because he kept you cool. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him, and I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It rarely does. You're a good dad. See you around soon? Ugh. It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Aww. You're so cute. I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I pop down next to her. Yo. What you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. Ugh, I hate this show. The couple on screen bicker back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The tiny house hunting brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby chic cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg. <laughs> Why don't they just get a regular sized house? Mm. I... I don't know. Mm. How'd afternoon, afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucian since he tried to... He lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of fine vintage and then tried to brick him into the wall, right? How did you know that? Has everyone read the story except for me? Lucian livestreamed the entire thing. This entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damien guy is a character, but he's really a good company and a surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. He's pretty great. He's a nice dude. Yeah! Oh, I wanted to tell you guys. Let's see what Damien has to say. Are you familiar with the works of Corey Feldman? He simply slayed in the Lost Boys. Stop it! I love it. Uh, I forgot to tell you guys. Um, I'm going to be gone for about a week next month because Josh and I are going over to Utah and Idaho uh, to just do some stuff. We're going to go see um, his friend Jared. Well, I guess our friend Jared. We're going to go hang out over there and stuff and have some fun. The kids are going to be with their grandparents. So yeah, it's going to be cool. So I just wanted to let you guys know, but I will have videos like ready so you guys will have stuff to watch while I'm gone. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons! I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. She's like, fuck yeah, I want it. Horn Institute for the Arts? We all know that she gets in, guys. Let's act. Surprised. I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And? The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. 
I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't- I got in! Oh! I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in! Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview, and your photography is incredible. Oh. Wait, Dad. <sighs> I know this one's really expensive, and it's so far away. I think for a moment, HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Hmm. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie. We're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. Mm -hmm. Wherever? Yeah, it's burrito time, okay? We're going to Taco Town. Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our full wrap burritos from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad. You know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the, through the bay. Yes. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID, and... Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we get all the professional photo editing software for free. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I had taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and interest. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Carl ruled. Hey. Oh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake? Or maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit though? Oh boy. I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No. Hmm? I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Hmm. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're gonna make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's gonna make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. Love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. They're so cute. They're so cute. Welcome. I love the relationship. You've got dads. Okay, whose house are we going to? Kennedy, listen. This is you from the past. Whoa, how did this happen? I figure you're trying to reply to this because I know myself, but this is an automated message from your, you earlier this morning when it was socially unacceptable to go out and buy ice cream. I forgot I did that. I, for, I forgot how I did that as well. The future is amazing. <laughs> Listen, life is short and ice cream should always be acceptable, but unfortunately this isn't the society we live in. And it's less a society we live in and more me projecting my own anxiety about being judged onto others, but you know what I mean. By the time you're reading this, it is a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you for going out and buying ice cream. You know what to do. Be good, me. <laughs> um... No. I don't- I don't want me from the future talking to me all of a sudden. You know what? I've earned a treat. On the way home, I decided to stop off and grab some ice cream. Which I fully plan to eat directly from the tub. I mean, I- I get it. That's what I would do. I spend a lot of time trying to figure out just which type of ice cream I'd like to eat directly from the tub. Rocky Road? Pistachio? Oh, Amanda's probably gonna want some too. Better get two tubs. She loves cookie dough ice cream, right? Hey, mister. 
I turn around to see Ernest leaning up against the wall of the convenience store. Ernest? You're cool, right? Uh... No? I'm shocked you even have to ask, Dude Meister. Oh my god, I asked the wrong person. Could you just help me out? Help you out? There's no fire involved, is there? Just clouds. So, if I give you $20, will you buy me e-liquid? Ernest, what's e-liquid? It's like, uh, Gatorade. You know, electrolyte liquid. I'd get it myself, but I'm banned from here for trying to run a grift on the cashier. A classic fiddle game. You know the deal. Oh, if you're talking about balanced electrolytes, then I got you, little buddy. And I didn't know you played the fiddle. Just ask the clerk for blue Kranz Rappel Vortex. He'll know what it is. No, that's an alcohol. I pick up a tub of pistachio ice cream for myself and a tub of cookie dough for Amanda. I search around for some blue crazen void stare, but can't seem to find any. I turn to the cashier. Say, where's your finest e-liquid? Behind the counter. You got an ID? First of all, my daughter is older than you. Second of all, I'm flattered. I switched shampoo recently. Is that taking some years off? Look, you need to be 21 to buy vape juice. Your hair doesn't look a day over 20. Wait a minute. Are you just trying to butter me up to get me to buy more ice cream? Because it's working. I glance outside and spot Ernest staring at me. Double wait a minute. So you're telling me that e-liquid is not a sports drink? It's for vaping. Ernest is watching us intently through the window. I better go give that kid a piece of my mind. I see. <laughs> okay, look. I'm going to pretend that you didn't try to trick me into buying you the old... Old Baphomet's cough syrup, then go inside here to purchase my ice cream. I won't tell your dad if you promise to scram. And stop vaping, you'll get popcorn lung. What if I give you 25? Go home, Ernest. As I'm walking back inside, Ernest calls after me. You can get popcorn lung from microwave popcorn, you know. I no longer trust this child, but the mere notion strikes fear into my heart. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? Come on, dude. You're just as bad as he is. How did it take you so long to realize he was fucking trying to get you to buy him something he doesn't need? I go back inside to complete my purchase with the good cashier. Thank you, kind sir, for your time and generous hair compliments. You got it, bub. I glance out the window while to see Ernest still outside. Yeah. Looks like he's talking to some other poor sap. Guess I should go outside and save this other guy some grief. Wait a second. That's definitely a cop. Oh boy. I grab my tubs of ice cream and bolt outside. Ernest is already face down on the hood of a squad car. Ernest, did you seriously just try to get a cop to buy you e-liquid? Do you know this kid? Uh... I promise he's a good kid, even though my daughter would absolutely disagree with me. I'm this boy's father. I turn around and see Robert walking up the street and toward the convenience store. Hello? Ernest, what are you doing? I want a lawyer. <laughs> First of all, good first instinct. Remember that you're not required to answer any questions from a police officer without a lawyer present. You're this boy's father? Uh. Yes, sir. Ernest likes to lash out at me like this ever since the accident. Oh, um... I don't like talking about it. That's fine. Mm. Robert gets a wistful twinkle in his eye. Oh, God. <laughs> it all started seven summers ago. My hair was long then. New Meadow was still in style. Ernest and I were down in the Florida Swampland scavenging for... Sir, I can leave you to take it from here. Mm. Sounds good. Thanks, officer. Mm. Ernest, come along now. You'll be cleaning grout from the rain gutter for a week thanks to this transgression. The police officer gets in his car and drives off. I'm stunned by how cool Robert was just there. Thanks. I want to say... Richard? Ouch. Huh. Don't mention it, Hemingway. Got in trouble plenty of times in my life just trying to do my good deed for the day. Will you buy me e-liquid if I give you 20? Child, I will end you. Huh. Hey, Kennedy. Will you walk Ernest home with me? Sure. Hey. <laughs> Ernest runs ahead, presumably so he won't be seen with us, which is a thing I think kids do. He reminds me a lot of myself when I was his age. <sighs> well, maybe I wasn't as dumb. Seems like he tortures his dad. Hey. Seems like he tortures just about everybody. He even stole your wallet. What? No, he... I pat my back pocket. I pat the rest of my pockets. He stole my wallet. Oh. Why are you doing this to yourself? I... What? Ah. Robert points at my tubs of ice cream. One of them's for Amanda. There. I have no qualms with the quantity of ice cream you've purchased. It's a perfectly respectable amount of ice cream. It's the quality I'm talking about. 
You work hard, Kennedy. You're a good dad. Don't you think you deserve top shelf ice cream? But these are on sale. Oh. <laughs> if you're gonna treat yourself, go big or go home. Real vanilla bean. Real pistachio. You deserve it. <laughs> Robert. So sweet. It's so sweet, honey. We arrive at the cul-de-sac and Ernest runs into his home. <sighs> that boy is the reason why we don't have prizes in cereal anymore. <sighs> Catch you around, Kennedy. Robert tosses me my wallet. I catch it with a surprised look on my mm -hmm. face. I stole it back. Mm -hmm. Keep it in your front pocket or use a chain like back in your ska days. Smell you later. See ya, Robert. I go back inside my home, ready to spend the rest of the night with two tubs of ice cream and also Amanda. <laughs> that little fucking kid. <laughs> Just Welcome. kick him. Kick You've him in the ass. Dads. Okay, no new messages. So we're gonna go ahead and save it here. And that is going to be it for Dream Daddy today, but that was good. Robert, you're a fucking badass. Ugh, I love you, man. I'm so glad that I romanced him, too. Craig is freaking, like, one of the sweetest, most endearing guys. Robert is not anything like he seems, and now I'm romancing Damien, who's, like, he's really eccentric and weird, but I really like him because he's actually really nice and sweet and stuff, even with his, like, insane son trying to cask up Amontillado people, which was fucking great. I love how Hugo's like, dude, are you serious? <laughs> so, thank you guys for coming in and watching Dream Daddy. You guys are the best. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Thank you for all the comments and just, you know, whatever. But... Yep, this time we're going to be romancing sweet, beautiful Damien, so I'm looking forward to his story and seeing where it goes from here. Alright, love you guys. Bye!